Well, hey folks, this is John with those Ozarks Back Roads with you today. We're out on the mighty v Strom back in the Ozarks. We got a beautiful day going on. Got some cool weather that's moved in. Nice enough you can get out in the middle of the day without suffering too much. So I just wanted to get out. We're out uh, down in the eastern Ozarks. We're gonna take a look at a waterfall at a shut-in and then go down and check out an old mill way down deep in the government woods. Just somewhere to go and something to do. This is my custom kickstand extension. There it is. Well, here's a signboard. Talks about the rhyolite plugging up the stream and how hard the rock is. And it takes the stream a lot longer to cut down through the rhyolite than it does the everything else. So you end up with a big plug of rhyolite. And that's what we got going on here. Well, here's the falls right here, the big plug of rhyolite. The creek's coming over. You just can't get that cut down like it can everything else. So the big plug stays in place. <laughs> It's pretty cool, quite a bit of water coming over it today. And it makes a nice stream pool right here for swimming. Had a look at Rocky Falls. That's a pretty cool little spot. Uh, if you got kids, it's a great place. It's not too deep. You can keep a good eye on them there, and it's really pretty. You can climb up on the uh, on the bluff there on the waterfall if you so desire. Today would be a good day for that. It's not too hot. Those rocks get hot, and uh, they'll burn your feet. But if you stay in the water, you'll be fine. We got the mighty V Strom out today. Um, it's doing real good. We've pretty much got it equipped uh, with everything that I'm going to do on it here. I added a, uh, well, I added the rocks risers the other day. Put those on. We did the, um, lowered the foot pegs, three quarters of an inch. So between lowering the foot pegs and raising the bar, the standing position is just about right for me. So that fixed that. And the only other thing that I've done recently, I added a tool tube. I built another tool tube like I have on the Tiger and mounted it pretty much the same way behind the uh, pannier rack mounts there. Tucked it up in there with some big heavy uh, uh, tire straps quite a few of them on each end. It isn't going anywhere. So that's pretty cool. I'm, uh, I'm ready to go to uh, Appalachia. That's my next trip. We're going to do some camping there for about a week, run around in the mountains there and uh, hit some of the trails that you hear about all the time, the roads up there. So that'll be pretty neat. Well, we're going to head on down the road here. We've got a mill to go see about. And it's a pretty cool mill. It's also on a, on a little shut-in, uh, an area where this dolomite's plugged up the stream. Uh, there's a lot of that in this area. So you run into that on this uh, creek here quite a bit. It's on the same creek we were just on. We gotta take a short little hike up the blacktop here and where, where it ends is, turns to dirt and then we start heading off through the woods. It gets pretty good from there. It's really pretty. Okay, nothing coming that I can see. And away we go. I'm gonna have to do a little remembering here because it's been a couple of years since I've been here and this road is not on the map. But I think I'm pretty sure this is it right here. Boy, and it's got all kinds. Look at the gravel on this thing. Yeah. 
it fell apart big time. Yeah, this road really fell apart. It's a lot rougher than it was. Any time I've been here before, if I remember right, this is a really steep hill right here. And it is pretty steep. I'm not as comfortable on this bike as I am on the Tiger and adverse terrain. I haven't ridden it enough yet to really It's, it's not as, uh, it doesn't turn, lean and turn and, you know, dodge and parry as quick as the Tiger does. It takes more effort and it's a little slower. And that's something I got to get used to. I don't know, it feels a little, a little heavier, a little slower to turn. Probably the geometry on the, the rake and trail, I'm sure has a lot to do with that and it's also a very long wheelbase it's got a 65 or 66 inch wheelbase and that's kind of long that's pretty long for a adventure bike that makes it less it makes it very stable on the highway in a straight line now this thing just lines and goes and wind doesn't seem to bother it too much but it makes it turn a little slow a little heavy little heavy feeling that's what's what it is it feels heavy I believe this is called Klepzig Klepzig I'll put it on the map Google Maps doesn't even show this road so you need an all trails app to find this road all right where can we park at because we are here this is the rhyolite shut in here the plugged up spot There we go. Perfect. It's an old dam here. Used to run across and it channeled the water into this little mill. Sits over here and the dams pretty much fell apart. Not much left of it. The creek's open. Runs through. But that's more of that rhyolite that's kind of stopped the creek up there it's made its way through it and then continues on it's pretty cool a lot of rock and there's some of the original dam that's still left most of it's washed away but a little bit of it left there really pretty spot We've got this little mill down here. That's part of the the old uh, sluice or the system where the water came through. You can see there's a there's a trap, a square hole there where they had a door. And they had a sluice run over, and there's another one right here with a door that fed into this, so they could control how much water came into their mill. See, there's a gate there in that hole. And then there's the sluice going into the mill. So they could control how much water came in. We got a split flow. Some of it comes around this way. And then over there, the major part of the creek runs. It was a turbine mill built by Walter Klepzig in 1928. And it is on Rocky Creek. They talk about the rhyolite and the sluice. That's what you call that, the sluice. It feeds the water into the mill and it was used as a sawmill house so they cut wood here that's pretty cool and there's a picture of the old turbine it was like a a water wheel laid on its side kind of way it was and they run the water in it and then it 
goes through and spins the blades. Then they got a generator on it here. So they were using electricity in 1928. Their saw equipment, their saw was electric. That was pretty common here in the Ozarks. Even the old mills that were mechanical with belts and stuff running everything in the mill. A lot of those they changed over and put generators or alternators on the uh, on the water wheel and changed it over, everything over to electric. Got rid of the belts and everything and just ran everything off of electricity. A lot of the old mills did that. Foundations failed here. Here's a look underneath the end of it where the foundations all fell apart and you can see all the rubble underneath where the foundations came in and the old sluice fell apart. Well, this is a pretty cool old mill, and I think it's okay, or it used to be. Yeah, here's a look at the old, where the generator would have sat on top of the turbine shaft there, coming up from below the, out of the water. About big enough to hold a generator, and that's about it. This thing is really... The floor is really bouncy in here. After looking what's holding it up, I think I'll just look at it from the outside. <laughs> A little spooky in there on that floor. Well, they got a nice window. It's safe here. Look how wide those floorboards. Some of those floorboards are 14 inches, 12 inches wide. They've sawed them out of... Uh, native oak probably saw them right here uh, this is pretty cool We had a pretty good look at Klepzig Mill there. That's a really nice spot there with a little, little shut-in going on there. That dolomite plugging up the creek and the old, uh, the old mill there with the dam that's all fell apart. It's just kind of cool. Yeah, I was afraid this would be too deep. It's pretty deep. If I had somebody with me, I'd probably walk out in there and consider it, but I can, I can see that it's uh, it's not knee deep, but it's getting close under the kneecaps there uh, Even when the water's really slow, it's still a, a foot and a half deep Boy this thing really chugs good. I'm tickled to death with the way it performs off-road as far as Other than the snatchy throttle when you need the power and you need it to chug and not stall on you, it does a really good job. It's got a lot of bottom end torque. For a little 650, it's kind of impressive. It's been a long time since I had a 650, back when I was young. But they weren't this powerful back then. I think this thing's about 70 horsepower. And that's a lot for a 650. But it's torque is what's impressive just off idle torque where you can chug up a hill it does real good it's better than the uh, tiger in that respect you got to be careful with the tiger you'll stall the thing fall over hurt your pride civilization is dead ahead so I think the little V-Strom is pretty much outfitted the way we're going to run it. I don't have anything else I'm planning on doing to it. It's got, it's got everything that I need, or that I know that I need. So I'd say it's good enough. Well folks, I appreciate you all hanging out with me, going for a ride on the V-Strom on a beautiful day. 
We got to see Rocky Falls, the big falls, the shut-ins on Rocky Creek. We also got to see Klepsig Mill. There is another rhyolite shut-in there at the old mill. Pretty sweet. I invite y'all to come back and see me. We got a lot of places to go and things to do this summer. Till I catch up with you again, y'all take care of yourselves. We'll catch you next time.